Hey, what's up guys? Today I'm going to show you how to install an LG dishwasher, specifically model number LDT5678SS. Let's go. So before I dive into this install, um, if you haven't removed your old dishwasher, check out my other video that might help you um, in uninstalling that, that old one, um, just to give you a few things to, to make the process go smoother. Now, first thing I'm gonna do is start off by showing you um, just a cool trick. I like to point this out just because a lot of people see these and they wanna start like trying to cut, the, the, um, cut them off to open the box using a blade. So you could actually avoid that. And the way you do it is if you look at these, these little straps, come down here and if you go turn it to the inside and then all you simply do, turn it to the inside and all you got to do is pull this flab up. And as you pull up, it pops it right off. So you don't need no blade for that. So same thing here, I'll show you again. Just all you use straight, turn, turn it to the inside, pop that off, boom. So it's as easy as that, you don't need anything to cut it off. Um, and we'll go ahead and get started. Then after that, it simply lifts up over the dishwasher. Be careful with this part. A lot of static on these. But Here's your LG dishwasher. One, one of the things I'll go ahead and mention is the dishwasher, the LG, this particular LG dishwasher and most, I believe all of you, they come with the drain hose already attached from the manufacturer. So this is your drain hose. Um, as you can see, it comes already pre-attached. Um, in addition to the drain hose, what you'll need is a, uh, a dishwasher kit. I recommend replacing it when you get a new um, a new dishwasher that that the dishwasher kit will include your supply line which we have here it's a steel braided line and uh, it also includes some wire nuts wire nuts for to connect your wiring um, the uh, 90 degree brass fitting that's to connect the actual supply line itself a power cord you may or may not need the power cord depending on your install it's possible that yours is hardwired but um, the kit usually includes this power cord so you could uh, use that if you need to add it uh, for a direct plug-in and then the uh, and then you'll also need a clamp to actually secure the drain hose uh, to your uh, to the drain under the sink so you got a clamp here um, check out the link uh, in the description of this video and it'll show you there's a, a recommended kit that we like to use it has everything um, that you'll need for the installation so first thing we'll do at this point is go ahead and prepare the dishwasher for installation. And in order to do so, you got to get this thing on its backside. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do that. Get it off the, the styrofoam. From here, um, well, the other thing, so before I lay it down, just because I don't want to put any pressure on the drain hose, it's got a little tie, twisty tie on the back. I'm going to go ahead and pop that off so that I can move this out of the way when I lay it down. I'm just going to, there's a little channel down here towards the bottom, so I'm just going to move it and go ahead and lay this on its back. All right, first thing you're going to do is remove this kick plate so that you can get access to the connections that you need from underneath. And uh, we'll pop that off real quick. All right. So after that's out of the way, you'll be able to see 
um, the the couple things that you're gonna I'm gonna uh, point out to you. First thing, this is gonna be where you're gonna connect your electrical. It's possible that you need to um, again you'll you'll install your power cord through this box here, um, or or your actual wiring itself. And then the other thing that I like to point out is there is a one foot in the back for leveling the unit on the rear side and it's accessible through this screw right up here it shows you how to turn you know which direction to turn the screw uh, in order to in order for that foot to go up and down the front you manually you uh, you manually turn them it actually has a neat uh, design on these feet where you could put in like a flathead screwdriver that allows you to do this so you can do that um, after it's upright but for right now leave them in the in the bottom position and lastly is the connection where you're going to connect your water supply so in this situation you actually will be able to connect your steel braided line right to here it's a 3 8 uh, line you don't actually need this brass fitting that will be will come with the kit usually it comes with this brass fitting and then the other option is a brass fitting like this on this particular model it comes already pre-attached which is awesome so you don't have to worry about adding any kind of additional connections um, you would just simply attach the line directly to that so we won't need this in this install uh, now the but let's go ahead and get this prepared I'm gonna start off with the supply line so we'll get that added and as you can see there's channels where that give you the space to be able to run your lines so this line is gonna go here we'll go ahead and attach it and it's a 3 8 as I said line and then usually you could use like a 5 8 um, wrench or a pair of pliers whatever you want as you're tightening that down I recommend you tighten it by hand as much as you could just to you know get it to make sure that there's no cross threading or any issues there and then you can um, give it a few extra turns to, to tighten it down I don't have my 5 8 on me today so I'm just gonna use a pair of pliers does the job too but nice and tight and that's good just feel for it you don't want to over tighten it so as soon as you feel it's tightened up um, don't 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 overextend Next thing I'm going to go ahead and do on my installation here, I'm going to actually be plugging the power cord in. So I'm going to go ahead and add my power cord. So we'll start off by removing this cover for the electrical. And then you'll be able to see what we're going to do from there. Covers off, slides out like that. Now, what you're going to find here is three wires a green for your ground and then you have your um, black hot wire and a white neutral wire the way you're going to install this is if you look close at the at the box here towards the bottom is going to be where you're going to run your actual electric line and i'm going to go ahead and grab my power cord show you how i'm going to fish it through the back side before i actually do my wiring so it just comes in right here through the bottom and clips into place and i'm going to grab my wire nuts and go ahead and secure the electric here so this is pretty straightforward obviously you're going to do your black with your black the white with the white and the green with the green and the way you're going to want to do this is get the wires pretty close together or as close as you can and even at the ends and then use the wire nut itself to make a secure connection make sure you do you do make a secure connection nice and tight you don't want any any loose connections here um, with any you know shaking or movement it could create a short so you don't want that so make sure it's nice and tight and then tug on each line to make sure that it doesn't um, um, you don't have any loose connection so I'll go ahead and same same applies with all three wires get that done so here's my white wire Is that and then of course get the ground and great like I said we're taking a few extra minutes here or seconds just to double check everything. Make sure everything's nice and tight. Now at this point, what you could do is go ahead and put your electrical cover back on if you choose, or you could save that for later. Um, but I'm pretty confident with my connections. I'm gonna go ahead and put my cover back on. 
All right, so once that's done, we got our electric out of the way. So our, our dishwasher is now ready to be plugged in. So move that out of the way from here. And we have our water line already attached and ready as well. Um, there's not much more you can do here. The only thing that you could possibly do just to get, take a little bit of pressure off of the foot, I usually like to just start it. So I just turn it so I could see that that mechanism is functioning properly as it should. So I'll just do, you know, just something like this. This way you can, if you notice, it's moving. So we'll just give that just to get you, get you, make sure it's um, you got started. And then same thing with these. I'll just do a, a slight turn just to get them ready. So if they're sometimes they come overly tightened well, or just tight to to break loose, but. So that's that. Um, I got my water line connected. I got my electric line installed. My drain line is factory installed. Uh, we can now get this on its feet and prepare um, sliding it into the space. So let's go ahead and do that. Get it upright. Uh, let me make sure once you get it up, up, up back on its feet, just make sure all your lines um, are free of any, just make sure that they're free, they're not like um, crushed or pinched in any way. So that's done. Um, and then I'd like to go ahead and let's see what we got inside. It comes with the unit. You have your owner's manual of course is in here. And then also what you're gonna look for is your mounting brackets. So usually those will come inside as well. And on this one, they are, they're going to be right back here. If you look in your silverware tray, there's a little, there'll be a little bag of hardware. And that's going to have your, um, your mounting brackets. And it looks like a clamp as well. Yep. So let me show you what that is. So usually these will come with it as well. So I got, if I got two brackets for installation, and um, some mounting screws as well as the clamp for the drain hose. So let's go ahead and <clears throat> get that ready. While we have that, I'm gonna go ahead and remove some of my packaging material. It's a really nice dishwasher. It's got the third rack too, which is awesome. And it also has a stainless tub. This is a super nice dishwasher. Okay, one other thing I want to another thing I want to point out to you before we go further is there's um, you just got this right here. It's like um, it, it actually needs to be removed <coughs> before installation. So simply let me grab my screwdriver. Pop it off. This is just for packaging. So this right here, it's got two Phillips screws, one on each side. So go ahead and pull that off. Boom, that's good. Get that out of the way. <clears throat> and there's, you'll notice around the dishwasher is um, uh, like a, some insulation. This here, all the way around. Um, that stays, it's not, you know, you're not supposed to remove it. So just leave that be. And uh, before we actually start to slide the unit in place, um, what I'm going to point out um, just, you know, so you can consider how you're going to need to secure your unit. <clears throat> um, you could either do an under counter installation, depending on your countertops, or if you have the, the bracket that's there, the mounting bracket so that you can secure it to underneath the counter, or you can do, you can choose to do a side mount installation, um, which we're going to actually demonstrate in this video because we have um, granite countertops and there's nothing to secure. We're not drilling through any granite. We're just going to secure it to the side. If you need to do an under counter installation, you're going to actually use the brackets that the unit comes with. There's two brackets and they get installed right here um, from the top. So it goes right here, right here at the end. So that's where actually these brackets go. So they, it actually has a little label right there. It shows you bracket, bracket. So you just slide it in like this. And then once you get it, once you can get it to the end, it allows you to straighten it 
straighten it out. And as you straighten it out, then you just bend this to this part down so it holds in place. So you just bend this down and then you're able to then secure um, and you do the same thing on this side. So it simply just slides here, boom, bend this down to hold in place. And then you then can, you go with a screw through the, um, from the, from the bottom of the bracket there into the bottom of your countertop. We're not going to do, we're not going to need these because we're going to do a side mount installation. So I'll show you that. And the way the side mount installation works is, um, right here you have on both sides, you have this little tab that, um, that you're going to actually end up going through from the inside of the, the frame. So you see where we're located right here? You see this? And then if you look on the inside, there's just a little, this little plastic cover. So we'll go ahead and pop that off. That's where you're going to actually run your screw through. So both sides, one here, of course, and then the same thing on the opposite sides. We'll go ahead and pop that off right now so that um, we are prepared for the next step. All right, so at this point, <clears throat> we kind of covered all of our bases. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start the, the installation part. And I'm going to point out a few things that you can see with our install. If your unit uh, is going to be hardwired, you'll see your electric line um, running. You're going to want to try to channel that um, as much as you could as you bring the unit, the dishwasher into place and try to run the channel towards the front of the dishwasher or run, or run the line towards the front of the dishwasher so that you can get to that electrical box that I showed you in the previous step. But because we have a power cord on ours, we're gonna simply plug it in. So if you've done the same thing and you need to plug yours in, then you're just gonna take your power cord and likely um, have to run it under your sink to your outlet. So that's your electric line. And then the next thing uh, is your water supply line. If you attached it like we did here, where we did it ahead of, the, ahead of, ahead of, ahead of um, putting it in place, same thing, we're gonna run the line <coughs> under the sink However, if you had like a copper line or a line that's not removable from your valve, which is likely, I've run into that sometimes too, where you have a shutoff valve that has a, it's a push-pull valve and the line is directly attached, so you have to reuse it, which is not a problem. You're simply going to do the same thing. You already have the connection at the bottom of the, the dishwasher. You're just going to make sure you run the line and try to just get it to where it channels to the front of the dishwasher. So I'm going to go ahead and just start learning my lines um, um, under the sink. With the drain hose itself, I'm going to actually fish this because I have, I have a little filler um, between my dishwasher and my, um, my cabinet for the sink. So I have plenty of room uh, for like just any kind of, uh, I got space. So as I said, I'm just going to go to fish my drain line right here through the top. Um, you may have to run yours through the bottom. doesn't make a difference. If you have to run yours through the bottom, that's fine. Just make sure once it gets under, um, under the sink, you elevate the drain hose so that it ends up higher than than your actual drain so you don't have any water back flowing into the dishwasher so in our situation since we're running it through the top we're able to be at a higher point than the actual drain uh, which will prevent that um, but next we'll go ahead and run our electric line i'm sorry the water in your electric line so i'm going to run my um, supply line right there through that bottom hole and then just go ahead and plug my dishwasher in so, do that. all right so um, I started the lines, so as you can see, here's my uh, supply line coming from um, behind the dishwasher and then of course the drain hose as well. So I'm going to go ahead and get that position where I need it. This way I can start pulling the lines through as I push the dishwasher into place. So this is my drain hose. I'm pushing that, pulling that through. Let me, it looks like it's in the way. There we go. Alright, so my lines, um, looks like it's um, fully extended and my supply line is too. Now what I can do is start going ahead with uh, pushing the unit into place. So try to make sure that the insulation blanket is hugging the dishwasher. This way it doesn't get, um, it doesn't like crink, crunch, up, crunch up at all and, and start to come out. So it's good. And then I'm gonna go ahead and slide it in. I'll come back under the sink to make sure that my lines are still free freely moving we're good and that's good as well cool we're doing good now <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and get it all the way in there Just make sure my line is free again So, 
what I'm going to do now is I'm going to work on actually start to do the leveling part. This way I can make sure I got the room that I need under the dishwasher. As you can see, I got a big gap um, right here between the counter and my dishwasher. So to, I'm going to so start uh, raising the dishwasher. And I'll start off by leaning the unit forward and um, using that, the, the back leg first, just to take some pressure off of it and get it get to move properly. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead. I got the back leg um, down almost about where I'll need it. Might need to make another adjustment, but now the next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead, as, as you can see, it's leaning forward, is raise the front a little bit, take some pressure off, and drop the front feet. So go ahead and do that. Like I said, you could use the flathead screwdriver for this step so that you could, um, it makes it a little easier to, to move the foot. So it's right in here, and then you just simply turn it. And um, that makes it really easy, nice to, to get to. And I'm gonna do the, the same thing um, to the, the opposite foot until I get it pretty even with the, with the back. All right, so I got my feet leveled up um, and we double check to make sure that your dishwasher is in fact level with the ground. Um, so you just wanna make sure it is so that the door will actually um, properly close. You want it to make sure if it's not, if the unit's not level, you'll, you'll, you'll create a little issue with the, with, the, with the unit actually closing properly. So as you can see, we're nice and level there. And the other thing is you want to make sure that front to back, you're also level, you, you know, don't, don't, you don't want the, the dishwasher leaning forward or, um, or leaning back. Cause obviously not only does it look bad, but it just, it's more, you know, you don't, you don't want to, you just want to make sure it's nice and level and flat with the, with the floors. Um, you may, you know, if you have any warping, you know, wearing with your counter or something like that, if it dips down in the middle, you, you don't want to use that as a guide, even if, even so. So you always want to, you know, use the floor as your, your um, guide for leveling the unit. What I do is I have a couple of checkpoints that I like to glance at just to make sure um, I'm nice and even in the space. I look at my space here, my space here, and then all around my space along the sides, um, just to make sure I'm nice and square. Now, now that that part is done, um, we can go ahead and work on our connections down here. Um, I like to go ahead and connect my water supply line first. This way I could turn the water on and just verify that my connection under the dishwasher is not leaking and with no issues. So let's go ahead and do that uh, next. And um, so. same thing as I mentioned um, on this portion, once you get the line attached to the fitting to the valve, just uh, tighten it by hand um, as much as you could and then just give it a couple like a, just an, an extra turn or so or half a turn depending on how tight it got and this way you make sure you got a nice tight connection and then you can turn the water on so i'm going to go ahead and get that done now and water's turned on so as soon as you turn the water on um i recommend you go ahead and just check your connection before you go any further so i got my water on there and i'm going to look back at the connection i made under the dishwasher and make sure um i have no leaks so it's good you can take a peek um, where their connections are actually made right here. So I just like to, to verify that there's no issues, nice and tight or nice and dry. Um, the next thing we'll go ahead and do while we're here is go ahead and uh, locate the clamp that comes with the unit for the drain hose, which is this right here. And we can go ahead and attach the drain hose. Um, you may have a, a standard drain. You may not have a garbage disposal. If you have just a standard uh, PVC drain, you're gonna wanna look at the size of the drain and and uh, make sure that the, the connection for the hose is going to make um, a tight connection there as well without squeezing the hose itself so as you can see this is, gives you a couple of different options for the size of the drain because we have a garbage disposal that is the largest size connection um, but you if the stem on your drain is not really long enough to get to where it needs to get to make sure you cut this down to make a proper connection with the drain hose so we're just going to go ahead and slide this over the drain and simply it just goes right over top of um the 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 the, the, the stem that's coming off the garbage disposal before doing this though just in case um i like to point some things out that I, you know, I've seen happen. If you recently had your garbage disposal replaced and possibly the reason why you're replacing your dishwasher is that it's not draining, verify that the plug 
in your garbage disposal has been knocked out. It's a very common thing that I always see happen. People replace their garbage disposal, not you know thinking about it, and then there's a, a plug in there um, that you that needs to be removed when you're installing a dishwasher. So just verify that it is clear, and then boom, we can go ahead and secure this on, and let's go ahead and tighten down that clamp, nice and tight. All right, so that's it pretty much under the sink for us in this step. Um, of course, if you also fed your power cord under the sink, then make sure you don't forget to plug it in there and uh, get that plugged in. Now, what we can do before securing the unit and uh, going to the final steps of the installation, let's go ahead and make sure that um, your, your unit is functioning or you know working. So we'll go ahead. This dishwasher is designed so that you um, power it on, choose your cycles and any settings that you want while the door is open and then you close it for it to start um, doing its wash. So as the door is open, mine's already plugged in, my water's turned on, I'm ready to put it to the test. So we'll go ahead and power it on. Boom. We got power. As I said, choose your cycle, choose your setting, whatever it is, just make sure you go ahead and do this step now. I just do a, a normal, don't do any auto, just do a normal wash. And then after you choose your normal wash, this is just for testing purposes, just hit the start button to start the wash. So once you hit the start button, you got a couple, like a second or two to go ahead and make sure you, after you hit start, you want to hit start and close the door um, so it will start its cycle. If you don't do it, it'll start flashing again um, because you took too long. So you got to make sure that after you choose your, 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 the cycle and the options you want and you hit the start button, you're ready to close the unit. Um, one of the other things I'll point out is if you, if you were to start the wash, it's okay if after you close it, you needed to add a dish, you could just pop it back open without worrying about canceling the cycle. Pop it back open, add whatever you wanna to add to it, or if you're choosing to cancel the cycle, but you can use the start button, like say you pop it open and you add something else, all you gotta do is hit the start button again and close the door and it'll resume where it left off. If you start the cycle and you change your mind, you don't wanna run the cycle, you can do the same, you can cancel it um, in, the same, in the same format. So pop the door open, the only difference is the start button can also be your cancel button and you just hold it down for three seconds. Just hold it down for three seconds and what it'll do is cancel. So as you see, I held it down and now it ended the cycle that I was about to start. So now I can close it um, so that I could, um, so that it, it just, it's pretty much um, not trying to uh, do a cycle anymore. So we know it's working. Um, the next thing I'm gonna do uh, while I have it here is let's go ahead and you, you, do, you secure your unit. If you're doing an under cabinet, um, now that you've verified everything is working, if you're gonna do an under counter, um, um, if you're going to secure it underneath the counter, go ahead and locate obviously these other the, the two screws that come with it for for mounting and and then secure those or if you're going to do a side mount then same thing grab your screws you may need to you know may need something longer but typically these will work um, if you have a standard installation site and you have the the proper uh, lip um, that's needed in order to secure it there's got to be a lip there obviously so that you can secure the other options um, there may be a, uh, there's alter an alternate option to allow you to um, to do a side mount, usually with the bracket, that, and it'll extend past the frame. But um, but for purposes of, of this particular video, um, we would just go ahead and secure these into, we got the two spaces on the sides. And once that's secured, then you can go ahead and put the covers back on to cover the holes. So we'll go ahead and do that. I'm not securing it, but you get the point there. So put, pop my covers back on and the unit now is, is secured in place. Um, the final step after you've done all this, you've made sure you've tested the unit, everything's working properly as it should. The final thing is of course to go ahead and put your, um, so install your kick plate. So it's got your kick plate here and we could go ahead and get that installed. Pop that on with the two screws. Let me go ahead and Throw that on real quick. And um, what you're gonna notice on the kick plate is it's got like this, uh, you know, a larger hole. And the purpose of that is so that as as you level your 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 dishwasher, depending on your flooring, you could adjust. This will adjust so that it fills the gap at the bottom. So you know, if it comes up at the top, it goes up. But you can go to the very bottom, and it makes sure that it it's resting um, where it needs to on the floor and, and filling any gaps. So that's there, and we can go ahead and just see. And there you have it. That's how to install an LG dishwasher. 
Um, I really hope this video helps. Um, if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button and um, subscribe to our channel for more. Thanks.